what's up folks uh hope you guys can hear me um yeah so i thought i'd do a quick uh paint and chat today um got into this uh dungeon mastering <laughs> obsession i'll call it uh so i started making like these 3d files uh where i'm doing this big sort of cavern thing um, and I figure, you know, this might help a few folks that are just sort of getting, you know, maybe into the hobby. Um, yeah, I'm not doing anything that's, you know, probably haven't been done before here. A lot of people have, uh, a lot of people have done this, but again, I just wanted to show, you know, how quickly, uh, you could paint something like this up, um, and at a pretty inexpensive, uh, rate too. So. Uh, anyway, so these are all essentially 3D printed uh, pieces. Um, there's a couple of different styles here. Okay, so this one here is actually uh, from an open lock. So open lock is sort of the only difference between open lock and other different ones is uh, the way that they clip together. Um, otherwise, they're pretty aligned. Uh, now, generally, open lock are um, one inch. Uh, squares, which is your typical sort of DND uh, one inch squares, but I prefer a larger area. So, for example, say I had a figure like this, if you put it on a one inch square, uh, that's fine. Um, but if you had a wall here, for example, it's really hard to squeeze the figures in. So, what I do is I actually blow these up to one and a half inch or 150%. Uh, so that you have a lot more room. Now, that being said, if you want to do that, um, that being said, if you want to do that, it will cost a little bit more in uh, PLA, right? But I think in the end, you'll be more happy uh, with a larger playing surface. Um, of course, any of this that I'm doing now can be uh, translated over to, um, anything could be translated over to like, uh, you know, other terrain for 40K or a, tabletop games right so anyway um that being said so this is actually um open lock uh this is from a group uh, uh from a patreon i do called dragon realm now again the clips are different but what i was able to do is basically take i don't know if you could see that i took half of the clip from open lock and half a clip from dragon realm so i'm able to take this click it in and then if i want click it into another one and you could do that with any type of ones that you might get or buy or if you go on Thingiverse there's thousands of them on there so you can check that out um, but anyway let's get painting um, so again the rest of this is from Dragon Realm this particular one is from Open Lock and I plan to do a bit more so the only thing I did in preparation uh, for this is really just print out the pieces they're right off the they're right off the plate uh, and then I gave it a quick uh, spray of um, Vallejo Hobby Paint. I, I went with green because I wanted something uh, that was going to stand out a little bit. Um, hey, what's going on? Hey, what's going on, Nathan? Got my ring. Oh, good. I'm glad you got it, man. <laughs> no problem. What's up, Brandon? Hey. So this is uh, Vallejo Hobby Paint. Um, I do. I went with green because I wanted stuff to sort of stand out a little bit more what i find I, I see a lot of these tables that are being done and uh, a lot of it is gray on gray on gray on gray um and i wanted to put a little bit of water on this too so i wanted something that's really going to contrast with the blue so uh, i figured a green background would work and it's uh generally a darker color so if you're going to start um generally you're going to go from darker colors to lighter colors um with the exception of when I do the water, which I'll, I'll explain later. Uh, so I got a dark green, uh, sprayed it over. The actual color of the filament that I'm using is black. I'm trying to find an example here, but oh, here, here's a roll. Here you go. You can see that. It's actually black. Uh, so when I spray on it, I don't even have to cover the entire thing. Um, you can see the little black parts sort of seeping through as well. And that's perfectly fine because I'm going to go with gray over this. So. I'm going to use uh, a quick technique. Um, actually, first of all, the paints that I'm using. Uh, so this is hobby paint. You can get this at a hobby store, super cheap. Uh, I really like this Liquidex uh, brand for doing this stuff. Now, and with any of these hobby paints, though, just be aware uh, the pigment is not amazing on these. But for 
terrain it's fine but for miniatures it's probably not the best um so check that out and um yeah so basics this is just a, a regular gray so the first thing i'm going to do is is a uh, a dry brush of this stuff now when i do dry, dry brushing on uh 3d prints um dry brushing is something i like to use a lot hey that's up crystal um dry brushes is something i like to use a lot but the problem with dry brushing on 3d prints is that it actually will pick up some of those um, those layer lines that you don't want to see. So when I'm dry brushing it, I'm doing a little bit more wet than I would do, say, a miniature. So I'm going to add a little bit of paint into here. Blip. You can see that. Actually, what I'll do is I'll get rid of my head here so you can see a, a bigger screen. Here you go. Boom. There, there you go. Okay. All right. So I put a little bit on here. It didn't need, doesn't need too much. Again, something like this will probably run you like six bucks. And this is going to last the whole project. So this will be a while. So first layer. Uh, oh, also the paintbrush uh, dollar store. So again, we're not spending a lot of money on this stuff. Dollar store, uh, craft paints, dollar store. I think they cost maybe $2 for a big thing like this. Again, this will last me forever. And then the other color I'm using uh, will be just a burnt umber, uh, again, dollar store paint. The only paints that uh, are a little bit more expensive is the primer. It's always good to have a good primer. Um, and then when I go in and do the, um, the water, because again, these paints don't have the best pigments, uh, I go with a little bit more expensive. So this is some Citadel paint and some Vallejo paint, uh, but we'll get to that. So I'm gonna quickly do this. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know, uh, or if you just wanna chit chat, I'm cool with that. So I'm just gonna lightly brush over, uh, leaving some of the green in the back, but also picking out, like I said, it's uh, quite a heavy dry brush, uh, so kind of wet. I'm gonna keep a lot of the green peeking through. Um, but also cover it with a little bit more of the gray and simply like that it doesn't take very much time So I'm gonna go through all this here are the uh, sort of flat surfaces that I'm gonna add some water to so it's fine uh, I could go over the water parts because I'm going to be painting over them anyway, so uh, I don't have to be so neat at this point All right, uh, hey Brandon, we got a question Okay, I wish that brand worked well for miniatures. I have a whole uh, box of paintings. Plan on trying oil painting. Uh, yeah, oil oil painting miniatures. Uh, I haven't actually got into that too much. Uh, I hear oil washes are really good for miniatures. Um, actually, oil, I hear oil, oil, oil washes are amazing for miniatures. So um, that part is good. I I go with generally acrylic paints though. I just I've worked with them forever. So that's sort of my uh, <laughs> that's sort of my thing uh <laughs> i've become such an expert yeah i don't know if i'm an expert at this uh again um just to be clear too when i'm doing this stuff uh, i always use like the the three foot rule right so if you're looking at a board generally you're going to be or at a table and you're playing in the game you're going to be maybe like three feet away right um so things don't have to be perfect uh, so think about that when you're doing it don't don't overthink and especially when you're doing terrain you really don't have to it doesn't have to be perfect right um and again it's actually pretty good that you don't want everything quite uniform and as you can see i'm just sort of splashing this gray on here um to get that to get that look sort of that more gray type look but you could already see there's already depth now um with the green in the back and just to give you an idea of what Without the gray and what the gray looks like cool all right so there you go so we're gonna keep doing this uh, we're gonna hit every single piece here with the gray uh, and yeah I do this uh, some of these techniques when I'm doing the masks and things like that too uh, so here you go here's some sort of cave walls that I'm doing here so again let's hit those hit them all with gray But uh, I don't know if you guys have tried DMing. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of work, but it's pretty cool. It's pretty satisfying. <clears throat> the stuff that I'm doing for this, I generally do for my sort of uh, 
tabletop war games as well. Um, so very similar techniques. It's with tabletop war games, I probably spend a little bit more time because um, the the sets that I'm using, first of all, are probably a lot more expensive than these uh, 3D printed ones. Uh, that being said, these look pretty good, I think. And when they when they're all together, you're gonna see that it actually does look pretty good. Uh, feel free to post any questions uh, if you have any, or again, like I said, if you want to chat anything. Been watching some shows, been watching Game of the New Game of Thrones, watching. Uh, uh, just actually saw Jaws again in the theater. That was a that was a treat. Love that film. Also kind of missed uh, coming on. It's been a while. I took a little time off of the, the Schedule Mania thing. Uh, I do plan on bringing him back. Uh, I've got a, a couple of projects coming up too. Um, one is actually gaming related, uh, D&D related specifically. Um, so I'm hoping to share a little bit more of that soon. A lot of the writing's done already, so we're waiting on some of the art. Um, but there will be a, a Kickstarter. Uh, I don't know if we'll hit the end of this year, but worst case, it'll be like Q1 of next year. And then we're going to have uh, Frankenstein uh, Frankenstein Visions uh, probably next October. What's up? Uh, I was so jealous. Is it still in the theater? Uh, Jaws? Uh, I think so. Uh, it, it is a limited run, though, so you might want to check it out pretty quickly it might be i think it's on at least another week so check it out uh i went to and i i know it's polarizing but i went to the the 3d um version of it um i've i watched the film like every year so i mean i've seen it i've seen it on tv i've seen it um <laughs> i've seen it in high definition i've seen it on widescreen i've seen it in 4k but uh, I've never seen it in 3D. And it's not just like old school 3D with your uh, red and blue glasses. They actually updated it with uh, polarized glasses. So it's pretty good 3D. Um, that being said, like a lot of people, I know a lot of people don't particularly like 3D because uh, it does, you know, you can get that 3D blur, blur that people talk about. Yes, it's not quite as clear in 3D. Um, but I will say that uh, there were some really impressive shots with the shark coming out um, in 3D, so uh, I don't know. I dug it. Uh, I also hear that it's in uh, IMAX, too, so I didn't see it in IMAX. I would have liked to have done that, but I think I missed that one. All right, so you can kind of see where we're going with this. Sorry, there's quite a few here, so we'll get through it. But as you can see, like I've already doing, I've already done a whole ton of terrain. Now, some people might be happy with just this, um, which is fine. I mean, it looks like a cavern, but I want to do a little bit more than that. So let's hit this a bit more. Hey, Daryl, what's up, buddy? Looking forward to seeing both Avatar films on the big screen. Yeah, me too. And and interesting enough, my my wife, who's not really into the nerdy stuff like I am, uh, is actually quite interested in seeing Avatar. Um, I gotta say, I wasn't I wasn't super excited about seeing Avatar um, until I saw a preview in 3D and IMAX, and it looks incredible. Like. When Avatar first came out, it, it definitely raised the bar in terms of you know special effects and 3D, especially 3D effects. But I think they've done it again because I, I I was just blown away by the the trailer that I saw. So these are breaking apart, so it makes it easier to do this. Uh, uh, oh wow, that must have been experience uh, seeing Jaws in the theater with knowing the film so well. Did it cause tension? <laughs> um, I kind well, I mean, I went there, I saw it with my wife, um, and she's seen the movie before too. Um, but I, I mean, I know this movie inside out, right? I could kind of recite it, but there are some specific scenes that, you know, like, um, not to give too much away, there's a, a scene earlier on in the film, 
um, where uh, the Richard Dreyfus character goes diving in into the water and uh, you know there's a jump square scare coming and I knew it was coming and <laughs> my wife literally screamed <laughs> and, uh, it was it was a mostly empty theater actually when I saw it but the people way in the back that were there started laughing and she took it she took it well so I was kind of experiencing it through her in a way um, but still uh, again I've never saw it in 3d so there's some really cool scenes some work better than others um, some work really well All right, so we're actually almost finished with this. This should be actually the longest part um, of this process, which is just getting, well, the longest part, the longest part of this process is actually uh, printing. But once they're printed, it doesn't really take too long. And then as you can see, uh, once it gets to this point, it really gives the pieces a lot of depth. Now the color guys in here, I think just because my office isn't, doesn't have the best light. It doesn't look, but you can still see the green through the back of it. Uh, sorry, I just got three little pieces left and then we'll move on to the next part. And with each subsequent part, I'm actually gonna be adding less and less paint to this. So again, boom, super easy. Uh, and I've used this brush, this dollar store brush for a while. I, I'll probably get through this entire project which is going to be massive. I'll, I'll post. Uh, I'll post as I go along. I just thought it'd be a nice idea to do a quick paint on, and it's nice to talk to people too online. There we go. Yeah, dab it on there. Boom. Almost done. And let's get onto this stuff here. Uh, nope, 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 nope. Okay, so. Again, hitting just all the keys, the key. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, oh, there you go. So you can see the background is still green, but the foreground is still, it actually looks super bright there. It's not this bright in person. Um, it's it's much darker. It's just because the light is like that. But uh, you can see the, the changes in color though. Hidden sides. I don't worry too much about these sides because they're generally hidden. So we just let it go. Um, in terms of uh, picking the color for the actual filament, I know a lot of people do a, like start off with a gray filament. I prefer actually using a black filament uh, because I find the gray doesn't, like if some of this stuff starts chipping, um, having a black filament is more forgiving than having a gray filament because you'll see the difference in the colors. Uh, if it's black, it just looks like a darker or a shadow. So I like using the black filament personally go and last one and then we'll get to the second part of this so again that whole section took maybe just a dab of paint and I'm not even I haven't even used it all all right so I'm gonna switch it out do, do, do. here we go cool all right so last section here let's do this So Sketchable Mania should be back. Um, I haven't booked one yet for September. I got a couple of ideas though. Uh, definitely want to do one or two in October because it's well Halloween month. And I want to draw monsters myself, so try to do something like that. Um, if you guys ever have any ideas, let me know, and I'll try to work it into the show. So there you go. All these pieces are done with the gray. All right, so the next thing I want to do uh, is I'm going to hit it just a, with a little bit of this stuff. So this is sea spray, but you could use like um, any more, like a lighter gray or even mix that original gray with a little white. But again, these are just sort of things that I want to add to the top <clears throat> top layer. So again, bring, more, bring out more depth. So very little bit, sorry, you can see. Adding just a little dab in here, doesn't take too much. And I'm dipping my thing here. Sorry, I keep moving. Okay, so it's much lighter gray than the other one. And I'm gonna be very, very light with this. I don't wanna to add too much or it's gonna really sort of take away from the whole effect. So I'll just 
just touching a few areas. So it gives the eye the impression again of more depth and also hitting some of those high peaks, which will allow you to sort of see the different variations in the stone. Okay, so again, we go around. This again, I'm not doing too much, just very, very, mostly at the top of it, leaving the bottom darker, getting a few of these done on the top. I'm just moving to the side as I go through. Let's add a little bit more here. I'm gonna switch out the camera. To the slam cam, there we go. All right, that's better. You can see it better. All right, so again, just touching the top of it with this, hitting some of the, the major peaks, a couple of dabs on the floor. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's back guano, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, there you go. Barely putting any of this on, just a little bit at the top there. Less is more. You could always go back and add more, um, but I find, you know, if you overdo it, then you have to go back from the beginning and that's gonna, that kind of sucks, waste of time. All right, there you go. Hit the back of it. Don't forget the back, even though you generally don't see the back as much, you can still, from the side, you're gonna see these back parts. All right, almost there. As you can see, I'm doing quite a lot very quick time. So we've been on for 22 minutes and this is almost all done. There you go. Um, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about 3D printers, 3D printing, anything like that. Uh, hey, what's up, Paul? Uh, I was just listening and pulling, so these D&D tiles look good. Yeah, I, uh, I'm very impressed with these. Again, these are from a, a Patreon, uh, Dragon's Rest is the Patreon, but there's a lot of cool ones out there. Uh, I used one called uh, Printable Scenery, which is uh, where I got this one from. Um, I find this one is actually really good too. The only thing is, again, compatibility, uh, you just got to make sure that the size is right. Uh, I, I uh, upsize everything to about 150%. And then what I use is I'll use like these little clips that will be adapters. So this is open lock to Dragon's Rest and clip it in and it works. And it's all compatible. Uh, which is good because each, each of these companies I find have different things to offer in terms of files. Uh, and I know, Paul, you're uh, <laughs> you're a pro at those. I've seen some of your stuff. It looks amazing. I still uh, I still need to come out and uh, play some Mech Warrior. We should do uh, we should do a demo or something online. That'd be cool. All right, almost done. Two more pieces, and then we get to the last part. Uh, we're going to have an event on Saturday. Oh, okay. Uh, during the day or into the evening? I actually have a concert on Saturday, but it's not in the, it's not until the end evening, but maybe I could swing by and check it out. Please send me the details. All right, so that's done. The lighter area. So now we have your base coat. Uh, which again is a dark green. I went with green instead of a black or a dark gray. And then I went with a, a lighter gray and then a very light. Um, again, it's, a, it's it's called sea spray, but you could go with anything. I only went with sea spray because it also kind of brings out that green a little bit as well. All right, so now that this is all done, um, what I'd like to do is again, break up the color. So I'm taking a little bit of this uh, burnt umber. And I'm basically, <laughs> with this stuff, I'm just going to blotch it around um, so that it gets little pieces. So I guess this represents, you know, those like dirty tiles. Again, dollar store stuff. 
the good the good and bad stuff about this again with the dollar store stuff is one it's very cheap which oops there you go very one it's very cheap it's great uh in that regards um because uh, you don't want to be using like you know this gw stuff look at this tiny little thing which costs like the same as 10 of these <laughs> uh you don't want to be using that for the majority of it uh but the bad you know the downside is that the pigment's not as good so you have to use a bit more um but in a way it kind of is a good way for terrain because you don't want a very strong pigment uh on those you want it to more blend and look natural so when i when i hit it with this brown i just kind of like hit this touch it in different spots and then it kind of gives you that little off coloring right so i'm just just gonna touch it in a few spots uh just randomly try not to but all this you try to randomize it a little bit you don't want to you know and don't forget the bottom the top uh this stuff as well boop, boop, boop. hit a few spots here okay very simple uh, I do these for my uh, my other ones as well uh, uh, so Paul he said that or a quick ink wash yeah yeah for sure uh, definitely definitely uh, one thing uh, with the PLA ones uh, I don't know if you've experienced this because I think you're using mostly uh, I could be wrong but I think you're using mostly um, resin prints resin prints detail is a lot better here you're gonna see like the the lines a bit so when you're using washes on a, a pla print sometimes uh unfortunately it gets into those lines and it kind of highlights them which you don't want so that's why i like to use this like kind of splotchy <laughs> this splotchy thing but definitely could use this as a wash for sure blah, blah, blah. all right almost done I think we're gonna be able to get these all painted in within half an hour. As you can see, it doesn't take a lot of time. And the result is pretty good. All right, last little few pieces here. All train is FDM, yeah, yeah, I, uh, I couldn't imagine doing so much terrain and it would cost a fortune. <laughs> it would cost a fortune if you did it in uh, resin. Plus, I think it's good enough. Again, I go with that three foot rule. You know, like unless you're really magnifying into this and seeing those lines, I don't think there's a, I don't think there's a big deal in doing this. So almost done with the brown, just a little dab. We'll finish off this part. It. okay here and you could do almost any of these steps like i could have done the brown before i did the lighter highlight one uh which is fine i just wanted to, to have the brown on there um so that it almost looks like dirt or mud or something like that um, that's been sort of put on these uh, so it doesn't look so clean all right, you can see an idea. That's what it looks like. Okay, all right. So basically, all these elements of the caves are done. Uh, these like sort of side parts. There, a little more splash of brown. Uh, so what's left is I'm doing a scenario where there's a bit of a, a water feature um, in this cave. So I'm going to take these pieces away and just focus on these pieces. Now these pieces, interesting enough, uh, here, bring it right here, are actually uh, lava pieces. Uh, so when I printed these out, these like so people could use this as lava, um, but I just instead of using it as lava, I'm going to use it as uh, water. Um, and again, with it's going to be a cave. I want the characters to be able to um, to walk on it. So it's supposed to be like just very shallow, shallow water. Um, oh, sorry, I had a couple questions here, Brandon. What's a good cheap thing to, for grass patches? I haven't found one since I found army painted bag. Um, so it depends on what you're doing, Brandon. Like, are you using your grass for um, terrain? Uh, 
or using grass for miniatures. Uh, if you're using grass for miniatures, the the, the tufts are good. They're easy to use uh, and they, they look good. Um, if it's for terrain though, that's gonna get super expensive. So you're probably gonna wanna get, um, if you're doing a lot of it, a static glass, a grass applicator, which essentially uh, creates static electricity. So what happens is as it hits, when you put the glue down and you hit it with the grass, the grass is actually going to stay up rather than seeing you'll see some people do it and the grass is kind of lying on its side but with the static grass applicator it'll actually stick up like grass um, and that stuff's pretty cheap the applicator will probably run you i don't know 60 70 bucks so it's a bit of an investment there but if you're doing a lot of it um it's definitely worthwhile all right all right so i'm gonna go with this tech uh, yeah, it's techless glue, so it's a bit of a lighter blue. Now, I'm not going for realism. Um, <laughs> fair warning, I'm not going for realism. I'm going for sort of more of a here. Just get my water over here. A dynamic look, and a, again, I want to have something that's going to look cool. Uh, the other thing too is with terrain, with all types of terrain, you want the terrain to look cool, but you don't want the terrain to be the center of attention, right? You want the characters to be the center of attention, right? So you don't want to take away from the characters. Um, all right, so with this, I'm just gonna, as you can see, there's a few like sort of valleys in here. Um, so I'm just gonna like hit some of those valleys with this. And again, I'm going super light. I could always go back and you could just go sand kind of wherever you want to go with this. Um, I'm going straight from the pot. I know that's kind of a no-no in a lot of <laughs> a lot of circles, but that's okay. So just going around, given the impression that there is some water that's flowing between these ridges. And this is gonna be the lighter of the two colors. Uh, so with everything else, I usually go from dark to light uh, with, um, with water or things like that, I actually usually go light and then I go dark because as you get to the deeper areas of water, it gets darker, right? So, and like I said, if I was gonna use like a craft paint for this, it probably would take me forever to get, I would have to do like 50 coats um, to try to get that effect. <laughs> there you go. So just hitting in between again, kind of, if you go over some of the ridges, it doesn't matter. I mean, water flows, right? So it's okay. So I'll just hit in between. And you could actually see some of the uh, crevices and things um, peek through underneath the water, which is a good sign. It also gives you the impression that the water itself is, um, that the water itself is uh, shallow again because I don't I'm not going with the deep water and you could do this the same thing you can imagine doing something like this but uh, using like reds and oranges and yellows and that would be your um, that would be your lava for example but I'm just using this for water and I'm not using a ton of this stuff I, this is the more expensive one but I'm just using a bit of it again because I'm not going super deep into it. So there you get a good idea. So there's a few areas that are a bit light that I want to use. So there we go. And some of the areas over here I find are a little light too. And there we go. That's done. Um, I'm gonna do the dark part in a minute, but I'm just gonna do hit this one up with the same thing. And here we go. Again, not being too precise. This is not this is not miniature painting. Uh, this is terrain painting, so don't have to take too much care and again you don't want it to be too blocky and square um, otherwise you know 
again, this this isn't looking supernatural anyway. <laughs> supernatural, this is uh, but you also don't want it to look kind of um, produced or mass produced, right? Um, I prefer it to look a little bit more organic. I mean, it's a fantasy setting, you know, who's to say what's what this is really supposed to look like. So <laughs> I'm going to go. It's going to look like this. I'm the DM. There we go. And we're almost done with this. Sorry, checking out some. Uh, Paul says, yes, three foot rule is gospel. Yes, don't beat yourself up. Don't take too much time. Uh, literally, I'm taking, like, this whole thing is probably going to take me, I think, was it 35 minutes that I've been talking my way through this as well? Like, I'm not just head down doing this as quick as I can. I could probably do it a bit quicker. But um, sometimes you just got to get knock the stuff out. Um, and uh, as my buddy Ramel from Games Workshop told me, the best, the best looking miniatures or best looking trains are the ones that are painted. So there you go. And uh, I don't know if the camera's doing this too much justice. I expect it probably looks better in person. But let's just give you a quick look of what this would look like. All together without here. Let's get some of these pieces here to get an idea of how this will all work. Something like this. You know, you could add these little pieces on top to give it a little bit more elevation. Um, I'm actually going to be adding these in a into like a water mat. But you could always, if you want to do some separation, or if you're playing, say, a war game, uh, you could always add these as sort of additional 3D elements within the cave. So I like to uh, knock off a few of those as well, as well as these. A better idea. Okay, let's finish painting these quick. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a, this is a deep blue, it's a Vallejo deep blue. So just a darker blue. Um, go again not using too much um, i'm gonna use the same brush in here and then a couple of the areas like say here i'm gonna add a little darker blue in the center of it uh, a little darker blue over here just to break up the color um, because if you look at water or anything like that um, you notice that there there is off coloring right um, if you sort of pay attention stuff oh there we go okay there we go there and then just do this Put some off coloring here you can see you there there we go and then it gives you the impression that there are some deeper areas than others the lighter areas again I keep the lighter areas around where the rocks are and then where the rocks are not put the sort of darker color in there. And that's pretty much it. Um, there you go. And of course, if you're doing something even deeper, you could go, you know, a third level in until it gets to like a, a dark gray. Or if you're doing like a C, you might want to go with like a green, a greenish blue or turquoise blue or something like that. Um, well, let's have a look at this. I don't know if we'll be able to pan out as much, but this is pretty much all done. Didn't take too long at all. Let's just throw some of these pieces together. Yeah, we'll throw a couple of these in here. Boom. There you go. It's like playing with Legos. 
<laughs> there you go. Anyway, you get the idea. There's there's a, a mini cave. Took me again about half an hour to paint this entire thing. And I still got more pieces here. I haven't even put them all on, all the ones that I just painted. So, um, uh, I've got a much larger version uh, that I'm working on. There you go, little dude. Um, to give you an idea as well, I've created these little 3D parts. So this is uh, just something I could place anywhere. Uh, I used exactly the same techniques that I use here, as you could see. Um, but I could add, say I had in the middle uh, a higher thing and, you know, big bad comes out of that, whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, or I also did this thing, which is going to be sort of the highlight of the of this particular room. So you could see the water flowing in. Um, so the water would flow in, for example, and then that's where it's sort of spilling out into all these little crevices, for example. So that's it. I uh, hope you dig it. Um, thanks for showing up, guys. And uh, let me know if you want me to do any more of these. Um, I plan to do some additional, uh, like, dungeons, and, and maybe I'll do some miniature painting and things like that. So if you're interested, in, I could do some of that. Um, and maybe we'll get some guests on to do some. Uh, Paul, maybe you could you could come on and uh, do some of your painting for your, uh, your Mech Warrior stuff. That'd be pretty cool. Could, uh, give me some techniques that you're using all right guys well thanks for hanging out um take care and uh look out for uh the return of uh schedule mania so that should be coming soon and some other announcements for some of the kickstarters we're doing all right take care bud uh here i'll put me up here oh Take care, guys. Uh, cheers. And uh, this is all recorded, so it'll be up on the uh, uh, the Schedule Mania YouTube channel. So go check it out there if you want to look at it again. Cheers. Bye.